Hey there, royal watchers and drama lovers. It's your favorite neighborhood critic here. And boy, oh boy, do I have a piping hot cup of tea to spill today. Grab your popcorn, settle into your comfiest chair, and maybe grab a stiff drink, because this latest development in the never-ending saga of Meghan Markle is about to blow your minds. So now we all know Meghan Markle, don't we? The so-called Duchess of Sussex, the woman who waltzed into the royal family like she was auditioning for the lead role in The Princess Diaries 3. How to destroy a monarchy? Well, it seems our dear Megan has found herself in quite the pickle, and let me tell you, it's more delicious than a jar of Branston's finest. So, picture this, Megan Markle, former actress turned royal turned, well, wherever she is now, decides she needs a lifeline. A way back into the glittering world of Hollywood that she so carelessly tossed aside for a tyra and a title. But here's the kicker, folks, nobody wants to touch her with a 10-foot pole. That's right. The woman who thought she could play the royal family like a fiddle is finding out that in Tinseltown, her act is about as welcome as a skunk at a garden party. Can you believe the audacity? After trashing the royal family left, right, and center, after dragging poor brainwashed Harry through the mud, she has the nerve to think she can just waltz back into Hollywood like nothing happened. But wait, it gets better. In her desperation, Megan decides to reach out to her old Suits co-stars. You remember Suits, right? That legal drama that was about as exciting as watching paint dry, but somehow managed to make Megan think she was the next Meryl Streep. Well, it seems even her old castmates want nothing to do with her. And the cherry on top of this deliciously messy Sunday, Wendell Pierce, the actor who played Megan's on-screen father, has basically told her to take a long walk off a short pier. Now, this is the same Wendell Pierce who once promised to always be there for Megan, who warned her about the life she was getting into by marrying Harry, but it seems even his patience has its limits. Folks, I can just picture the scene. Megan, sitting in her Montecito mansion, probably wearing a $5,000 cashmere sweater while pretending to be just like us, frantically dialing numbers on her phone. Hello, Wendell? It's Megan. Remember me? Your TV daughter? I could really use a favor. And Wendell, bless his heart, probably took one look at the caller ID and threw his phone out the window. But can you blame him? I mean, really, put yourself in his shoes for a second. You're a respected actor, minding your own business, when suddenly your former co-star becomes the most controversial figure since, well, since her husband's great-great-uncle abdicated the throne. Would you want to get dragged into that mess? I think not. And let's not forget, this is the same Meghan Markle who's been playing the victim card so hard, she could probably qualify for the oppression Olympics. The woman who sat there on Oprah's couch in a multi-million dollar interview wearing designer clothes and had the audacity to complain about how hard her life was. The same woman who claimed she didn't know anything about the royal family before marrying into it, as if Google doesn't exist in her world. But here's the thing that really gets my goat. Megan seems to think she can use people like tissues, use them once and toss them aside. She did it to her own family, she did it to the royal family, and now she's trying to do it to her former colleagues. It's like she sees relationships as stepping stones, only valuable as long as they can get her to where she wants to go. And where does she want to go, you ask? Well, if the rumors are to be believed, Megan fancies herself as some sort of American royalty, the princess of Montecito, if you will. She wants to be in the A-list circle in Hollywood, rubbing elbows with the Kumis and the Oprahs of the world. But here's a news flash, Megan. Hollywood isn't buying what you're selling. You see, in Hollywood, loyalty means something. Burning bridges isn't just frowned upon, it's career suicide. And Megan? Well, she's burned so many bridges, she could probably single-handedly solve global warming with all that heat. But let's talk about poor Harry for a second. Oh, Harry. Sweet, naive, ginger Harry. The spare who thought he could rewrite the rules. The prince who traded his crown for a Netflix deal. I have to wonder, does he ever wake up in the middle of the night, cold sweat on his bro, wondering what on earth he's done? Does he ever look at Megan, Furiously scrolling through her phone trying to find someone, anyone, will still take her call and think, what have I gotten myself into? Because let's be real, folks. Harry has given up everything for Meghan. His family, his country, his titles, his dignity, all tossed aside faster than Meghan can say, I'm the most bully person in the world. And for what? To be a sidekick in the Meghan show, to be the plus one at parties where he probably doesn't understand half the conversations. It's like watching a car crash in slow motion and we just can't look away. Now, let's rewind a bit and really dig into this Wendell Pierce situation. Here's a man who, by all accounts, was a mentor to Megan during her Suits days. He played a father on the show and it seems he took that role seriously off screen as well. 
He was there for her, supporting her, even as she embarked on her whirlwind romance with Prince Harry. In fact, Pierce was one of the few Suits cast members who spoke out in support of Meghan when the pressure of royal life started to get to her. He was quoted as saying, Meghan's a strong woman. She's capable of handling it. Oh, how wrong you were, Wendell. If by handling it, you meant throwing the entire royal family under the bus and then reversing over them a few times for good measure, then sure, she handled it beautifully. But now it seems even Wendell has reached his limit. Can you blame him? I mean, imagine being in his shoes. You'd supported this young actress, watched her grow, celebrated her fairy tale romance. And then before you know it, she's turned into some kind of media monster, leaving a trail of destruction in her wake. I can just imagine the conversation. Megan, Wendell, darling, it's been too long. Listen, I'm thinking of making a comeback. You know, show everyone that I'm more than just a royal troublemaker. I was thinking maybe we could do a Suits reunion, or maybe you could put in a good word for me with some of your Hollywood contacts. Wendell, Megan, I, I think you've got the wrong number. This is, uh, Wendell's twin brother, Mendel. Yeah, that's it. Mendel Pierce. I don't know anything about acting or Hollywood. I'm a, a plumber. Yeah, a plumber in, ah, uh, Alaska. Gotta go, there's a polar bear attacking my igloo. Bye. I mean, can you blame the man? Who in their right mind would want to get caught up in the whirlwind of drama that seems to follow Megan wherever she goes? It's like she's got her own personal rain cloud of scandal, and anyone who gets too close ends up soaked to the bone with controversy. But here's the thing that really tickles me. Megan seems genuinely surprised by this. It's like she honestly believes she could trash the royal family, make wild accusations on international television, turn her back on every commitment she ever made, and then just, what? Pick up where she left off in Hollywood. Oh honey, oh sweet, delusional Megan. That's not how any of this works. You can't just decide you're bored of being a royal, trash talk your in-laws on international television, then expect to be welcomed back into the Hollywood fold with open arms. That's not how any of this works. And let's talk about this idea of Meghan trying to be the royal of America. I'm sorry, but what? America fought a whole war so we wouldn't have royalty, remember? We don't need or want a royal family, and we certainly don't need one headed by a deedist actress with delusions of grandeur. But you know what the real kicker is? While Meghan's out there trying to scrounge up any scrap of relevance she can find, the actual royal family is carrying on just fine without her. William and Kate are out there doing actual work, supporting charities, representing the UK on the world stage. They're showing what true royal duty looks like, and they're doing it with grace and dignity. And King Charles? The man Meghan and Harry have dragged through the mud at every opportunity. He's getting on with the job of being king. He's not sitting around moping about his ungrateful son and his Hollywood wife. He's doing what royals do, putting duty first. You know, I have to wonder what Princess Diana would think of all this. Diana, who understood better than anyone the pressures of royal life, but who also understood the importance of duty and service, would she be proud of what Harry's become? A man who's turned his back on everything he once stood for. A man who's allowed himself to be so thoroughly manipulated that he can't even see the damage he's doing. I doubt it. I think Diana would be heartbroken. She raised her boys to understand their privilege, to use their position for good. And while William seems to have taken those lessons to heart, Harry, well, Harry seems to have forgotten everything his mother stood for. But let's get back to Meghan and her Hollywood dreams. I have to say, I'm almost looking forward to seeing how this plays out. Will she manage to smooth her way back into the A-list circle? Will she end up doing reality TV? Now that's a show I'd watch. Keeping up with the Markles, anyone? Or will she and Harry end up as a cautionary tale? A warning to others about the dangers of believing your own hype? Only time will tell, folks. But one thing's for sure, this drama is far from over. Meghan Markle isn't the type to go quietly into the night. Oh no, she'll keep clawing and scratching and playing the victim until she gets what she wants, or until everyone is so sick of her that she fades into obscurity. Personally, my money's on the latter. Now let's take a moment to appreciate the sheer audacity of Megan's latest move. After everything she's done, after all the bridges she's burned, she actually thinks she can just pick up the phone and call in favors. It's like she's living in her own little fantasy world where actions don't have consequences and everyone is just waiting with bated breath for her to grace them with their presence. But reality is a harsh mistress, isn't it, Megan? And it seems reality is finally catching up with our favorite ex-royal. The Hollywood elite, the very people she so desperately wants to be part of, are giving her the cold shoulder. And can you blame them? Who wants to associate with someone who's proven time and time again that she'll throw anyone under the bus if it suits her needs? 
Let's not forget, this is the same Megan who allegedly made Kate Middleton cry before her wedding and turned around and played the victim on international television. The same Megan who claimed she felt trapped in the royal family, despite having more freedom and privilege than most people could ever dream of. The same Megan who said she just wanted privacy, then signed multi-million dollar deals with Netflix and Spotify to air her dirty laundry. It's like she's operating on a different plane of reality from the rest of us. In Megan's world, she's the perpetual victim, the misunderstood heroine of her own story. But here in the real world, she's quickly becoming a cautionary tale about the dangers of hubris and the importance of gratitude. And poor Harry. Oh Harry, I almost feel sorry for him. Almost. Here's a man who had it all prince of the realm, beloved by the public, with a promising future ahead of him. And he threw it all away for. What exactly? A life of exile in California? A Netflix deal? The chance to air his family's dirty laundry for the world to see? I have to wonder if Harry ever looks back on his life before Meghan and thinks, what if? What if he hadn't rushed into marriage? What if he'd taken the time to really integrate Meghan into royal life instead of expecting the entire institution to change overnight to suit her whims? What if he'd chosen duty over drama? But no, our Harry chose the path of most resistance. He chose to turn his back on everything and everyone he's ever known, all for a woman who seems to view him as little more than a meal ticket and a path to fame. It's tragic, really. The spare who so desperately wanted to be the star that he was willing to burn down his entire world to do it. And now? Now Harry's stuck in a gilded cage of his own making. Too proud to admit he might have made a mistake, too stubborn to try and mend fences with his family. Instead, he's reduced to being Megan psychic, trotted out whenever she needs a bit of royal sparkle to boost her failing brand. But let's get back to Megan and her desperate attempts to claw her way back into relevance. It's almost sad, isn't it? Almost. If it weren't so infuriatingly predictable. This is a woman who thought she could outsmart centuries of royal tradition. Who thought she could play the game better than people who've been doing it for generations. And now that it's all blown up in her face, she wants a do-over. Sorry, Mix. Can I call you Mix? No. Too bad. That's not how it works in the real world. Actions have consequences, even for self-proclaimed douchesses. You can't spend years trashing the very institution that gave you your platform and then expect everyone to welcome you back with open arms. But here's the thing that really gets me. While Megan's out there trying to resurrect her career, the royal family is thriving without her. William and Kate are more popular than ever. They're out there doing real work, making a real difference. They're not just talking about change, they're actually making it happen. And King Charles, the man Megan and Harry tried so hard to paint as the villain in their little soap opera. He stepped into his role as monarch with grace and dignity. He's weathering the storm of his son's betrayal with a stiff upper lip and a commitment to duty that would make his mother proud. You know, I can't help but think about the contrast between Megan and Kate. Both married into the royal family, both faced intense scrutiny from the press and the public. But while Megan crumbled under the pressure and lashed out at everyone around her, Kate has risen to the occasion. She's grown into her role as future queen with grace and poise. She's become a true asset to the royal family, a partner to William in every sense of the word. And what does Meghan have to show for her brief stint as a royal? A list of burned bridges longer than the River Thames, a husband who looks more lost with each passing day, and a reputation that's been tarnished beyond repair. Was it worth it, Meghan? Was the fleeting taste of fame worth destroying your family, your husband's family, and any chance at a respectable career? But let's be real for a second. This isn't just about Meghan's failed attempt at a Hollywood comeback. This is about something much bigger. This is about the clash between celebrity culture and centuries of tradition. It's about the difference between fame and duty, between self-promotion and service. Meghan, with her Hollywood background, seems to view the world through the lens of celebrity. Everything is a photo op, every interaction a chance to build her brand. But that's not what being a royal is about. Being a royal is about service, about putting the needs of others before your own. It's about understanding that you're part of something bigger than yourself. And that, I think, is where Meghan fundamentally misunderstood her role. She saw being a royal as a stepping stone to greater fame, a chance to be the star of the show. But the monarchy isn't a show, and the royals aren't meant to be stars. They're meant to be symbols, representatives of their nation and their people. So, what have we learned from all this, my dear viewers? Well, for one, that fame is a fickle friend. One day you're the darling of the royal family, the next you're persona non grata in Hollywood. We've learned that actions have consequences, even if you're a self-proclaimed duchess. And we've learned that no matter how high you climb, no matter how many titles you accumulate, it's your character that people remember. And Meghan? 
Well, I think we've all got a pretty clear picture of her character by now. But you know what? In a weird way, I almost feel sorry for her. Almost. Because it must be exhausting living life the way she does. Always plotting, always scheming, always trying to stay one step ahead. Never being able to just relax and be yourself because you're so busy trying to be what you think everyone wants you to be. It's a lonely way to live, isn't it? No wonder she's desperately reaching out to old co-stars. But here's the thing, Megan. True friends, real relationships. They're not built on what someone can do for you. They're built on mutual respect, on shared experiences, on genuine care for each other. And those kinds of relationships, they can't be bought, manipulated, or schemed into existence. So, where does this leave us? With a former actress desperately trying to claw her way back to relevance. With a prince who's lost his way. With a royal family that's weathering yet another storm. And with all of us, watching from the sidelines, alternately fascinated and appalled by the whole spectacle. But you know what? Life goes on. The monarchy will survive, as it always has. William and Kate will continue to do their duty to represent the best of what the royal family can be. And Meghan and Harry, well, they'll continue to provide us with endless fodder for gossip, speculation, and yes, YouTube videos like this one. So, my dear viewers, what do you think? Is there any way back for Meghan? Has Harry dug himself into a hole he can't get out of? Or is this just another chapter in the never-ending saga of the Sussexes? Let me know in the comments below. And remember, keep calm and carry on. It's what the Queen would have wanted. Until next time, this is your friendly neighborhood royal critic signing off. God save the King, and God help the Sussexes. They're going to need it.